Hello, friends, and welcome to the Wisdom for Life broadcast. This is Pastor Glenn with another episode that we hope will bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Starting a new series uh, this morning, Grace-Based Relationships. Going to take a look at a very obscure passage in the Old Testament. Shouldn't be, but it is obscure. Maybe you've never heard this story before. I've only heard it a time or two, but I think it's interesting. Going to uh, actually preach to everyone this morning, but very specifically to the ladies. And how God has special invitations for each of you to not only partake in his grace, but also the inheritance you have with your heavenly father. So that means you're daddy's girl. Come on, right? Come on. I got two daughters and they say they're daddy's girls. Every time they do that, I'm like, what do you want? Where's my wallet? I'm buying, I'm buying, whatever it is, I'm buying. And then my wife says, simmer down. Okay. Numbers 27 verse one, it says, then the daughters of Zelophehad, Son of Hefner, the son of Gilead, the son of Mekir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters, these are important. There's five of them. Say five. five. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah. Now we read that Noah in English, that kind of jumps out as like Noah, a male's name, but it's spelled differently in Hebrew. It's not rest as Noah that built the, the ark rested right uh his name means rest but this is a female's name noah now hogla i don't know who named their daughter hogla it's in the it's in the bible and i can see the tomatoes coming okay milka and tiz or tirza they came forward and stood before moses eleazar the priest the leaders in the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting and said Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers, who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin, and he left no sons. A little bit of a background, very quickly there. Uh, They are now about to enter the promised land. Moses has to send out a census, and he's going to number all the males. And what happens is, is as the males are numbered, they are by faith, I mean, they haven't conquered anything yet. Nothing has, been, nothing has been done other than they're right at the edge. How many of you know that God will bring you right at the edge? And then he'll see, do you have enough faith to go in? Well, the last time they had been at this place, they didn't go in. The last time they had been at this place, they ran off scared. They were chicken, right? And so they are at this place again. A whole entire generation has died. And being at this place they are by faith saying let's go ahead and divide the land so that all of the children of israel will have their own spots now how many of you know that takes faith i mean when's the last time you've been at a point of a need and not only did you so believe that what god has promised is yours but you looked at it as your very inheritance let let, let me put it to you this way If you're a believer this morning, you are not only a son or daughter of God, and we're going to use sonship as a biblical position in the Bible. We're all in sonship as believers. That means you have a father. And that means you ought to have a good working relationship with your heavenly father. But it means more than that. It means, watch this, it means you have an inheritance this is why it was so important for jesus to start telling people you must be born again when you're born again you come into a new family with a new daddy and that father has an inheritance for you it isn't just god now it's daddy or in hebrew it would be abba and if it was mother it would be ima so it's abba it's father i want to just ask you this morning how many of you when you pray you pray to the holy spirit of jesus done that it's not like it's the end of the world if you do but how many of you know jesus did not exactly tell us to pray that way he didn't 
Jesus said, when you pray to the He wants you to have a relationship with Now, why do I have to do this? Because in our culture, we have generations of people who have really strained relationships with their earthly fathers. And unfortunately, that begins to be projected onto their heavenly father. And what God wants you to be able to do is to call him dad. He wants you to come close and see him as your father. And so Jesus says, when you pray to the Father, and then he taught us how to pray. And of course, we come in the name of the Son. But it's because we are sons. Now, when you begin to see God as your Father, you begin to see everything that you go through being taken care of by Dad. Come on. And he's a good Father. And the idea here is, you have an inheritance now. Now, there was a guy back in the, in the Old Testament called Esau. I always think of his name, Esau, you know. He despised his birthright. He despised his inheritance. And we read right past that and we think, well, that's old Jewish vernacular. That's old Hebrewism. That doesn't apply to today. Absolutely does in the New Testament actually we get the idea that he despised his inheritance and the bible says that after he came to his senses about it he went back to his father and he repented of it and said i'd like to have that back but he didn't get it back he didn't get it back because god knew in that moment there was another that would look to the father and love his inheritance come on you not only need to look to your father as your father, but you need to love your inheritance from him. And your inheritance is heaven. This is why Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. You have an inheritance. You have a place. And some of you are like, I got a mansion. And I've told you, mine will have a, a pool. This, the, it's going to be in the shape of, of a guitar. Honey, you don't have to preach the rest of this, do you? And you can come over whenever you like, right? It's going to be a blessing. But the reality of it is, at that time, people didn't have their singular homes. At that time, when a new family came into the new family and they started a new family, they added on to the home that was already there. Your inherit God wants you, the Father wants you as close to Him. Mm, come on. He wants you as close to, to him as he possibly can get you. Now, standing at this point, these five women come, and they stand before the tabernacle. Eleazar, the priest, is there. Moses is there. I'm going to paraphrase the rest of the text here for you. They stand, and they go, but we're not getting any inheritance. We're, our father died, and he wasn't part of the Korah rebellion. You remember the Korah rebellion? Three bad things happened there. You see, Korah came forth and said, Hey, all of you guys need to understand something. We are all just as called as Moses is. That's true. But the issue isn't with the officer. The issue when you start to question God's picking of leadership is with the office. Hello? And so as they began to attack the office of Moses, God said, that's going to bring judgment. What happened? Well, the next day after the test was done, there were three bad things that happened. One was when they lit these little bowls and they had fire in them, the fire of the Lord came out of the bowls that they lit and consumed them. Can I just tell you something this morning? God does have an order from Scripture. And I'm not here to tell you that that means the pastor gets to do whatever he wants. That means that there are fathers, there are mothers. Come on, you should obey them that there's authority around you. And if they're, if they're walking in accordance to, to Scripture, as unto the Lord, you follow the scriptural authority that's put before you. Not only that, but then the people that stood around that began to complain about it, the earth opened up and ate them. And not only that, wait, there's more. <laughs> the people start to grumble and complain, and they got all upset. They got all upset. And you know what they came to Moses and said? Hey, all those people we really, really liked. Because we, we thought this whole following God thing was political. All those really, really people we, 
good people we liked, they're all gone now. So we had fire, we had earth, and then the wind blew in and there was a plague. Now we had earth, wind, and fire. Come on, I'm inside. I'm telling you, man. I did. Somebody stole that name. Somebody stole it. A plague came in and it took Moses and it took Aaron to, to pray for those people. And what these five women did is they came before the tent of the meeting, the tabernacle, and they said, our father wasn't with that group. Our father, listen, our father was a good man. He did die because we all have sin. He did die, but he didn't die because of a rebellion against you or God. Yet we're going into this land and we'll have no inheritance. He was a good man. So we want you to know as his daughters, he had a good name. Come on, say that with me. Good name. And we want his name to continue. We want his, his legacy to go on. And he will have no legacy in the earth. It'll all be gone if there's no land. And this, is, this, this just blows my mind because Moses doesn't go, now wait a minute, you're a girl, five girls, you're a bunch of girls, get back. You got no business coming to the front of the tent of the meeting. You ain't even boys, let alone you don't have a husband. You should have sent your husbands, but since you don't have one, you don't, listen, you don't have any business talking to me. The Bible says Moses turns around, goes into the tabernacle and asks the Lord about it and comes back. And the Lord says, they're right. They're actually right. Now, what ought to be blowing your mind this morning is this. We're going to pray in just a second, but I'm having fun. <laughs> what ought to be blowing your mind this morning is this. Was the law changed? Because my Bible says, well, it's all our Bible. <laughs> Thank you, brother. You're welcome. I stand corrected. <laughs> we, we had a meeting this week, and he's just like, yeah, I love you. So <laughs> it's all our Bible. All our Bible says this, that I am the Lord thy God and I change not. It says that the grass is going to wither, but my word will always remain. So can I just say this morning that maybe something wasn't changed. Maybe something was not yet complete. Maybe something wasn't reneged, but something was now revealed. More was revealed. And then we get into the New Testament and Jesus says this. This is awesome. Jesus goes, don't think that I've come to abolish the, the law, but to, come on, what's that word? Fulfill it. It's not yet fulfilled. Jesus, oh, come on. So it, ha it wasn't yet complete. Moses goes, asks of the Lord, and the Lord goes, they're right. Moses comes out and says, you're going to get your daddy's in inheritance come on somebody let out a shout this morning somebody give god some praise and all the ladies are doing it and the guys are like yeah it ain't, this sermon ain't about me anyway come on pray with me father in the name of jesus we just god we just love you we seek to make your name honored in the earth god you raise up sons in all of us sons in the faith in all of us so that your name will go throughout the earth and that your treasure would be your children. But God, you would be honored in your treasure and the earth would be yours. And God, you do it through our lives as we come boldly, say boldly in our prayer, boldly by faith. In Jesus' name, everybody said, come on now. Amen. Amen. I just want to ask you, I hope this morning you know who you spiritually are. Because if you're attempting this morning to identify with anything else, that would be a falsehood. Your identity is that you have a father and you are his child and that you carry his name. That's your identity. In a culture, in a world where everybody is self-identifying, the way to know who you are is to know whose you are. Come on. That's the way to know it. And, and let, let, let me help you with this a little bit because they do it down in the South. In the South, they don't want you to introduce just you. They want you to say, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Right? 
Because I got to know who your daddy is to know who you is. Conjugate that. <laughs> so often today, especially women, are now force fed in this culture a backwards understanding of identity. Let me put it to you in just three words for your notes. Here's how backward it is have, do, be. First, you've got to look at what you don't have, and then you've got to say, well, I'm not anybody until I have that. It might be I don't have a boyfriend. It might be I don't have a car. It might be that I don't have any money. It might be that I don't have a career. It might be that I don't have children yet. It might be that I don't have a home yet. And until I have these things, I am no one. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. You, you've got to get it straight. You've got have in the wrong place. Have is not what comes first. And then because have is first and it's in the wrong order and the prioritization of life is not right spiritually, then you go out into do. Well, now I have to do this and I have to do that. I have to be the perfect mom. I have to go do uh, my job perfectly. Oh, I've got to have a career. I've got to be a perfect mom. I've got, to, I've got to go out and do what it takes to have this and have that and have this and have that. And then I've got to blow it up all over social media so everybody else knows that I'm doing well too. And that's out of order as well. That will absolutely not only exhaust you as a woman of God, but it will cause you to be more confused than you've ever been before. In fact, let me just tell you this. You were probably more on target when you first got saved and you just prayed to God and said to God, be my dad, than you got yourself wrapped up in all of the haves and all of the do's. You are human beings, not human doings. Nothing. And then it's, and then it's R. And then it's B. So who you are should be first. Who you are is decided, already decided by Christ. And already decided by the Father in heaven. And then once you recognize who you are, then once you go and do, you recognize that by faith is already done. Oh, come on. Jesus said it from the cross. It is finished. It is complete. It is Done. The sufficiency of the cross does not just include your salvation. It also includes your healing. It also includes the completion of your destiny. You're not out to do anything. You're out to be a part of what already has been done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, come on. This is good teaching. <sighs> then once you got the done right... And I love hearing done in my house. That means there's food, okay? And then, then you move on to, then you move on to the last one, have. Because you recognize that what already, you, what you need to do has already been done. You join in it. You're a part of it. You're, and by faith, you join in to what is already completed and done. And then by faith, you recognize that those things that are promised you, even though you don't necessarily see the fruition of them or the fullness of them yet, they are already yours. And you already have have. This is the correct order spiritually. And this is where the five sisters were by faith. They said, there is a land that God says belongs to us. We are not currently in that land. But we are claiming, come on. We are claiming that. And we are not coming in our name. Did you, did you, you read that with me? When they showed up at the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, and they showed up to talk to Moses and Eleazar, they came in the name of their father. They came in, the, in fact, the rest, all the way up to verse 11, is they're talking about their dad. They said, our dad was a good man. Our dad left a good name. Our dad had a destiny and an inheritance in this earth. And now that inheritance is going to be gone. And our dad wants to give it to us. And Moses goes, I don't know what to do about that. The law is incomplete about that. Went in and prayed to God and guess what the Heavenly Father said? They're right. What do you think God does today when you show up and you say, God, there is a need. It's overwhelming. It, man, it, it's almost crushing me. However, I know what your scripture says and I know what you've promised me and you are my father, you are my dad. And so 
I believe it's done, and I believe I have it in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many of you know God says, you're right? Amen. You're right. Give God some praise this morning. You're right. Feels good to be right every once in a while. I mean, every once in a while. And that's, that's the way they come to the Lord. Now, it's interesting. We need to take a, a, a moment here and just take a little pause here. Their father's name, Zelophehad, in Hebrew, very interesting. It means protected against fear. That's, that's cool. And, and you think I can make something out of that? No, nope, God can. Our dad's name is protected against fear. Is there any fear in this moment? Maybe you don't see it in the text, but I certainly do. And for you dudes, you probably will never see it this way because you and I were born dudes, right? And, and we don't understand how this maybe works, but you're about to go in and possess land, which is going to take a fight. But it's a fight that's already finished, okay? You got to get that straight spiritually, right? But these ladies, they don't have anything. Once the fight is over, they got nothing. They got no land. They have no inheritance. They have no future to look forward to. And yet, I believe the reason why they showed up with the boldness that they have is because their dad's literal name meant, I'm going to teach you how not to fear. Do you know what God the Father wants to teach you, ladies, this morning? To never walk by fear again. Never walk by fear again. And you know what ladies are great at? Even better than dudes. And I'm not, listen, I'm, I, I'm not picking on you this morning. But my wife considers all the possibilities. How many of you know that's kind of a good thing? Especially for guys. She considers all the possibilities. Right? I'll just say something. I'll wake up one morning and go, guess what we're going to do? And she'll be like, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> you know? I'm going to go back to the old TV days. Some of you, most of you are not old enough to remember this. But you remember the Honeymooners? Ralph Cramden would always come up with some ridiculous idea, yeah. right? And, and, you know, and he'd call his wife in and she'd say, oh, here you go, you know. And she'd have to help him consider all the possibilities. Now, I'm not talking about that. That's reverence. That's respect. I'm not talking about that kind of fear. I'm talking about considering all the possibilities against what God's Word says by faith. I, I'm talking about that. When you're, when you're more concentrated and focused on the fact that you don't have anything to look forward to, and, and that, that, that's a very common thing today in our culture for ladies. You don't have anything to look forward to. Uh, you don't have anybody to uh, fight for you. And you've got uh, no place to call yourself. But man, you're doing like crazy. So you can have what the world says you should have. You're trying to achieve it like no tomorrow. Well, pastor, where'd that come from? Oh, I'm glad you asked. That came from the garden. When the devil said to Eve, you're not enough. I'm paraphrasing. He just said, you know what? There's more. You want to be like God? And Eve said, yeah, yeah. She's already like God. She's already made in the image of God. And what did God speak over Eve when he created him? Created her. Very good. She was already very good. She didn't need anything else. You know what very good means? Anybody know? You know. Great, honey. It means very good. <laughs> right? It's just like, wow. You know? D minus on the test this morning, folks. I'm telling you. You know what very good means? Come on. Good. Like five people. Okay, this is great. <laughs> so you know, when the devil shows up and says, you know what? You're not good enough. You have to remind him and yourself what the word of God has said. Amen. You got to remind him you got a daddy, yeah. you have a father, and your father father has promised you some things, a lot of things, and you got to remind yourself and that old slew foot what those promises are. So they learn this, I believe, from their father. Protection against fear. They weren't numbered. They weren't worrying about that. They just went and they brought their case to the right people. And in verse 6, you'll see that God says that they are right. I want to give you just a couple of things we can learn from these women. 
Just a couple. Say a couple. Okay, just a couple. All right. Here's the first one. They had a choice. They had a choice. They could sit wherever their tent was. They could sit there and mope, get all upset about it, complain, go from tent to tent, tell everybody how bad it was. So now they're giving out land and we don't get any. You know, they could, they could play the victim card, right? And I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to engender that. That's everybody plays the victim card today. It's not a it's not a female thing. I go to some men's breakfast and I'm just like, "Will you just eat your pancake, please?" I'm serious. Man up. Come on. You you were promised, you were promised more than that in God's word, and you have a choice. Believe it or not. That's the choice. The choice is not, "Well, I believe it, but well, And I told you this before, you're going to go to heaven and God's going to say to you, well done. He's not just going to say, well, or is he? But the story of our life today is, well, I know he said this. I know that it's mine, but well, so I'm just going to go from tent to tent and telling everybody about my plight, about what I'm going through. That's not what they do. They boldly go to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. And they lay down what it is they're going through and they do it in boldness here's the next one they didn't live for the present but they came boldly by faith to obtain what was to come i just want to i just want to challenge every lady this morning in christ you have so much to look forward to not just in heaven but here on earth you have so much to look forward to sarah you have so much to look forward to you know and if I can't get it for you, I, my, my dad will. You know, you have so, cause, because I love you. I want you, to have, I want you to have it all. But the Bible says that even as your husband and even as Bob is your dad, your father, right? We could not even come close to what the Heavenly Father has promised is yours. Amen? Amen. 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 Number, number three, the daughters. They believed in that land to come that their father would protect them from fear. Now I'm making a shift from their dad to their heavenly father. They believed that their inheritance was theirs and that they would be protected in that new land, in that new place. Here's the next one. These women were single women. Not only could they have played the victim card, but they could have competed with one another. Now I know, I know all women love women. <laughs> whatever i know i know because a pastor a while if the, <laughs> if there's <laughs> you get more than five women together <laughs> okay whatever you're not going to be real with me this morning <laughs> are these are these the cards that are left over i feel like i'm serving in the lord's army this morning i we need to get out of here honey before i get killed but uh Sometimes it's a little hard to be a woman and try to be a woman with other women. Okay? And it ain't just, it ain't just ladies. I'm picking on the dudes next week. Because the dudes do another thing. You see, here's what the dudes, they all get together and everybody, every guy in the group, within five seconds, is making fun of another guy. Right? You don't know this. It happens. It happens. It happens a lot. And usually... I'm the one either getting it or I'm giving it. That's just guys, right? Ladies, they'll go home and do that. Or they'll make a phone call and do that. Or they'll, ah, I know how to tell you this morning. Remember back when you were a kid and you had a sleepover? (laughs) And you girls all invited other girls to your house for a sleepover? Oh, that just went fun, didn't it? for like an hour you never invited anybody over okay yeah right and if there's more than two or three somebody's crying by the end of the night (laughs) it's true and all the guys are so silent because they're just like you just you say it pastor you you go go yeah mean girls okay cool i feel better now no i really don't care (laughs) 
<laughs> but yeah, it's Mean Girls. All right, so here's the attitude here. They came together. I know they were sisters, but think about this for a minute. Their relationship with the other girls was healthy enough where they said, let's be unified in this. Not only let's, you know, not only was it, let's go make sure we talk to the right people, all right, and let's respect authority. And not only was it, we're not going to go from tent to tent and complain about this and whine about this and play the victim card, but we're going to go together. We're going to go in unity. And that gets God's attention. Because there's something about prayer, even in the New Testament, that when two or more touch and agree on any one thing, it'll be done on earth as it's done in heaven. Come on, God wants to see agreement. Because it starts to model uh, the personality of the Trinity. And God wants to see that in the earth because that's his image. Imago Dei. That's his image. And you are his image bearers. But that's the thing. When we're going through something, very often, we, we, we want to be the only ones that are going through it. And if you're going through it and you need, a, you need somebody to go through it with you, we'll go through it together and then go make sure you go through it together at the altar before the Lord and take it to your Heavenly Father. Don't five of you show up and see pastor. No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> he, he, he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? I want my days to be long upon the earth, all right? You just got to go, go the right place. That's what they did. And here's the next one. We're almost done. They, they lived into... And they came in their father's namesake. They came mentioning the name of their father. It was about their father. And about their father leaving a legacy and an inheritance for them. It was faith and action. They came in the name of their father. And that's what made it so powerful. That's what brought them all together. Um, and I'm going to close with these two ideas if I can. For your notes. You say, well, there was some rules. And, and listen, God invented the rules. Rules are important. Do we have rules today? Well, out of the three types of laws of the Old Testament, we still have moral rules. We have the Ten Commandments. No, we don't have the civil. We don't have the ceremonial anymore, but we still have the moral, right? We still understand that God wants us to keep his word. But today it's done through relationship through His Son, Jesus Christ, in the regenerative work of the Holy Spirit in us. It's not changed from the outside in, it's changed from the inside out. And it's through relationship. And some of you are excellent with rules. Some of you are the rule people. You know the rules inside and out. But can I just help you? Change doesn't come by the rules. What the rules just do is tell you you need change. I'll say it again. What the rules do is tell you you're in need of change you understand and value grace now that you know the rules if you did not know there were rules you would not respect grace this is why so many pastors are preaching only grace and not telling their congregations that god does have a word and rules and if they do not lean upon the grace of god by faith then they will face judgment of god are we all in agreement of that so people don't have any value for the grace of God and uh, God's uh, desire to give us grace because they don't have any desire for the rules. I played baseball and basketball as a kid and no rules in that game would have been terrible. Boundaries were good, right? But they served an end. The game wasn't all about just hitting the ball and keeping it in bounds or making the basket at the right basket, because many times when I played basketball, it was the wrong basket, but that's another story, okay? They served a purpose, and that was for me to be a part of my team and relationship. Uh, an equation for you. Please write it down. We've mentioned it before, but please write it down. Please. R plus R minus R equals R. R plus R minus R equals R. Okay. Rules and regulations minus relationship equals resentment. 
God didn't just give us rules. God gave us relationship. And the relationship that they had with their father here on earth, these five women, they recognized was the relationship they could have with their heavenly father. Even better. And they seen through relationship that God had more than just rule. Come on. God had more than that. God had relationship. And that's what they came in. The name of their father, the relationship they had with their father, and the relationship they had with their heavenly father. And you say, well, pastor, why is it such a big deal that I get that story? Why? Because there were five of them. And five is a number for grace in the Bible. A number for grace. There were uh, five ingredients in the anointing oil. There were five offerings made in the Old Testament. There were five wounds on Christ's body at the cross. There were 5,000 people that believed. You remember when the Holy Ghost came and in the book of Acts and the upper room, 5,000 people got saved each day of creation as seen as a thousand years. You know, it's, this is cool. This one is kind of, this one will give you a, a goosebump right here. There, if each of those days of creation is seen as a thousand, then Jesus came at the beginning of the fifth day. Mm, mm, mm. Vince ain't here this morning, but Vince, if you're watching online, that's better than one of your Italian meatballs, and they're pretty good. They're pretty good, Vince. We love you. Um, and, and, and if you look in John chapter 10, verse 10, it's, it's really cool. Uh, it kind of mirrors the creation narrative that comes from Genesis, and we see that on the fifth day, God starts using in Genesis the word abundantly. And Jesus says that the devil, the thief, has come to steal kill and destroy but i have come that you might have would you shout it out this morning that you might have and have it Woo! (laughs) i like abundant life so if we're going to say there's five let's just take a little look at their names and then we'll have some prayer this morning how about that all in favor say aye. aye okay motion carried the first name Mala. Whoa, this just this is well, this is remarkable. This tells the whole story of grace and relationship with the Father. Now don't it? Mala means forgiven. And then Noah. Now it's not rest, it's it's the female version of it. It means movement. Now that you're saved, now that you're forgiven, move in faith. And then Milka, that means queen. You are nobility in Christ. You're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, and a peculiar people. You would call forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's you. Tirzah means pleasing. Now you can live a life that's pleasing before the Lord. Why? Because you have relationship with him. Because you are forgiven. Because you now walk as one of his daughters. I don't want to say it, but Hagla, okay? Hagla. <laughs> Hagla is the best. Now, one translation says it's partridge. Little bird, little bird. Another translation has to do with what a, what a partridge does when they stand on their two feet. And it literally means this. It means... To dance and to spin around. And so God says to the ladies this morning, you're forgiven. God says to the ladies this morning, move in faith. God says to the ladies this morning, you are queens. God says to the lady this morning, the ladies this morning, you are pleasing. You are very good to God, the Father. And God says to the ladies this morning, so why aren't you dancing? Can I, can I just leave you like with, with a picture of what this looks like? It, it, can, I, I want to show you what this looks like in our congregation today. Because you know I like pictures. You know, I like to show you stuff. There just happens to be a young lady in our congregation that lived out this entire message. She's living it. She's li- she, you didn't need to hear it today if this is you. Hi. Madison. Can we get a picture of Madison? Up. Uh, That's Madison right there. Yeah, there she is. Uh, 18 years old, and right now she wants to kill me, but 18 years old. She, okay, 
we need to back up. Just look at the picture. We need to back up some. She has had an absolute, total life transformation in this church. And, and without going into the B.C. days, before Christ days, that's not important. What's important is who she is in Christ now and how she's living now in Christ. Amen. And here's what has happened. She is born again into a new family. She has an earthly father, but even more than that, she has a heavenly father. And she's living like it, boldly, as a woman. So she's graduated She's gotten saved here. She's also been baptized here just recently. But more than that, she's got a full-time job. She works in an office, right, honey? Is that right? Works in an office. But she's like, I'm not just going to stay here. I want to help people. So you know what she did? She went down to the fire station here in town, close by, and she said, I want some training because I want to help people. I might want to be an EMT or a medic or something. And they said, sure, come along. I want to remind you, she's 18 and she's a girl. All of you guys, what's your excuse? I'm talking to you about knowing who your father is and walking out by faith and believing what he says you can have. So they said, sure, come along. And she did the complete fire training I think I'd die within the first 10 minutes of like some kind of heart problem. But like she's told Sarah and I, she, you know, she works out every day. She does whatever she can to maintain her health so that she can help people. She's also part of Courtney Markley's group here in the church, right? And I'm praying that she will hear from God to go on a missions trip next year. That's Madison. There she is. You want to stand up just a little bit? Can everybody give her a hand? Right there. Right there. Yeah. Madison. Woo. Hallelujah. Mm. It's awesome. <laughs> you say, well, that's not special. But here's the deal. Let, let, me, let, let me tell you this. There's not a time these doors are open that she's not here. She's so, she's so ate up with loving on God and her father. She believes so much. There's not a time these doors are open that she ain't here. 18 years old, she's putting up with me on Wednesday nights too. Can you believe that? Yeah. Oh, she doesn't. I don't, know. I don't know. Here's what I want us all to understand. We look at her and say, isn't it great that here, this kid, this young lady is experiencing so much for the Lord? You're all kids. You're all kids. It's, it's not how old you are. It's whether or not you believe you have an inheritance or not. And you boldly go get it. That's all. That's, that's the difference. So, hey, with that in mind, I'd like to call the worship team forward. Come quickly. And I want to call all the ladies forward to the, off, to the alt, altar, not for an offering, to the altar this morning. Yeah, after that great message to the ladies, we're going we're gonna to take up an offering. <laughs> We want to call all the ladies forward this morning. Can, can I get all the ladies to stand? Could you all stand? Yes, 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 yes. And uh, Miss Sarah and Miss Brenda, come on up here with me, too. And uh, there they are. Can I get all the ladies?